Coming up on This Week in Plymouth, the Planning Board announces the next community meeting, a farewell for our town clerk, and updates to the downtown drainage project. All that and more coming up on This Week in Plymouth. Hello and welcome to This Week in Plymouth, I'm your host Dan Salzer. Starting off this week, the Planning Board met this past Thursday, May 18th. The Board hosted three public hearings, all of which were approved. The first two applications were for accessory dwelling units at 72 Morse Road and 9 Martin Estates Road. The last hearing of the night was for a boundary line adjustment at 160 and 188 Old Hebron Road. There were concerns over the changes allowing for commercial development on the road, but after some clarification from the applicant, the board approved the adjustment. I'm Tom Hahn with uh, Forco and Rumney, uh, representing the Favre family, who are the principals in both of the ownerships. Um, so they're principals of the Wasset Investment Fund as well as the Bertha Favre Revocable Trust. So it's, it's kind of a family transfer here as they're doing some estate planning and uh, overall property planning. Um, lot 228-8 is 43.82 acres. Uh, lot 228-9 is 35.86 acres. Lot 2289 is encumbered by a conservation easement held by the uh, Rumney Ecological Systems and 7.18 acres of that parcel was reserved um, in the conservation easement for a single family residential site. So the proposal is to move 23.17 acres from 228-9, which has the ease conservation easement on it, uh, and add those acres to lot 228-8. We are speaking here this evening to raise concerns over the proposed boundary uh, line adjustment that's been requested for 160 and 188 Old Hebron Road. Um, at face value, this request for a boundary adjustment appears benign, but it is in fact one of the first steps in an effort to fundamentally change the composition of Old Hebron Road. Soon 188 Old Hebron Road and the hayfield that sits directly across the street, parcel number 288-007, will be placed on the market for sale. It will be placed on the market as a 100 acre parcel with multiple building lots and it will have a price tag that is well outside the reach of the Plymouth residents. The current residents of Old Hebron are looking at a future where the construction of three or more houses is not only a possibility, it's a near certainty, um, and granting this boundary adjustment and future requests from the Favre estate to subdivide will set in motion a cascade uh, of events that are both troubling and short-sighted. If it's granted, it's important that the planning board understands that this goes expressly against the wishes of the year-round residents of Old Hebron Road and works to undermine and further fragment our agricultural lands, critical edge habitats, and an important wildlife corridor. Hi, I'm Lisa Doner. I'm on the Pemmy Baker Land Trust Committee and just want to let you know that um, the previous speaker's statements are not in concordance with our understanding of the Favre intent. We've been in discussion with the Favre family for the last year about putting the field that is across the street from Bertha Favre's house into an agricultural conservation easement where there will be no development with the exception of one small lot that's being set aside. Um, so the majority of that field is intended to be conserved. Uh, we were also in discussion with the Favers about extending the conservation lands that are held by the Pemmy Baker Land Trust. Um, that's still in development, but this lot line adjustment is part of the process of getting to a point where that conservation easement can be developed separate from the residential lot A, which was already slated to be developable. It's worth noting for everyone in the room that as members of the planning board, our job here is to enforce the laws as written in our zoning ordinance and follow our regulations. And 
some of these other concerns we've heard are important concerns and to, and to some extent outside the purview of what we can consider as members of the planning board, which is also a reason if you are concerned, I mean, it's going forward um, about certain changes, this is all the more reason to speak up when it comes time to think about zoning amendments and that sort of thing, um, that, which is where the teeth come that can actually um, promote or prevent certain types of um, changes happening. That's where the actual planning happens. Yeah. Can I ask the applicant a question? Yes, you may. Is there any specific intent to the lot geometry? In some respects, the, uh, the lower elevation line of this new, um, the 12.69 acre lot um, was designed to be um, 100, 200 feet away from the large uh, clay brook wetland area. Are you ready for a motion? I am. I will move that we approve the boundary line adjustment as presented. Second. With, with the waivers as requested. Second. Um, so we have a motion and a second to approve the boundary line adjustment with the waivers requested. All in favor? Aye. 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 The planning board also announced the next community meeting date regarding the housing study. The meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, June 7th at 6.30 p.m. in the Bobcat Cafe at the high school. There will be a special presentation at the meeting done by Barrett Planning Group going over the data they received from the housing survey. If you are unable to attend in person, we here at PBTV will be providing live coverage of the event on channel 1301 and our YouTube channel. Now moving on to this week's announcements. The tax bills have been sent out this past week. The deadline to pay is July 6th. Payments can be made by mail, in person, or online at www.plymouth-nh.org. The new two-week outlook for the downtown drainage project is now available to view on the town website. The two-week outlook goes into detail on all the work that's being scheduled to be done on the weeks of May 22nd and May 29th including any detours and road closures. To view the document, head to the front page of the town website and click on the red link at the top of the page. Josie Ewing has resigned as the Plymouth Town Clerk and will be making a career move to work for the town of Lebanon, New Hampshire. A farewell gathering will be held on Wednesday, May 24th from 12.30 to 2 p.m. in the upstairs meeting room at Town Hall. Thank you, Josie, for all that you've done for our town and we wish you the best of luck in your career. It's last call for the Recreation Department summer programs. If you're interested in participating or have a child you'd like to sign up, be sure to visit the Recreation Department website for up-to-date openings and how you can sign up. The Communities for Alcohol and Drug-Free Youth, Katie, will be hosting its 21st annual summit this upcoming Friday, May 26th. The event is invite only, but PBTV will have full live coverage from 8.30 a.m. to noon on our YouTube channel. Taking a look at sports coverage next week, both the Bobcats boys and girls lacrosse teams will be hosting the Hopkinton Hawks for senior days. The boys will face off on Wednesday the 24th with the girls playing on Thursday, May 25th, both starting at 4 p.m. You can catch full replays of each event on our YouTube channel and throughout the week on channel 1302. Only one town meeting on the calendar for next week. The Plymouth Select Board will be meeting on Monday the 22nd at 5 p.m. in the upstairs meeting room at Town Hall. Programming note, there will not be a new episode of This Week in Plymouth out next week due to scheduling conflicts, but we'll be back on the air with you June 3rd with a new episode. That will end this week's episode. For our executive producer, Jonathan Picard, I'm Dan Salzer. Be sure to check out the town website regularly to stay up to date on the downtown drainage project and also sign up for the town newsletter if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in a couple of weeks on This Week in Plymouth.